What's up everybody? Welcome to Jack's Drinkwater Southern Cooking and Barbecue. In today's video, we're gonna be making an authentic Cajun dirty rice, Isaac Tube style. Let's get going. All right, let's get this party started. Uh, so here we're gonna start out with some oil and just enough to fry us up some of this ground beef we got. We got about a pound of that ground beef we're gonna be. So we're gonna just let our oil heat up here a few minutes then we'll put that ground beef in. in. All right, so I got about a pound of ground chuck here, uh, 8515, I believe it is. And I've salted this side. I've salted this side right here. So we're gonna go down first. Key to this here is have your oil screaming hot and we're not gonna break it up yet. We wanna go for about three to five minutes on one side. All right, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit this with a little bit of salt on this side here. That'll about do it. All right, so what we're gonna do is leave it about three to five minutes on this side till it gets nice and crusty on one side, and then we're gonna flip it and do the same thing on the other side, and we're gonna do all that before we break up this meat. Just in case you didn't notice, today I'm cooking on the Disco, or um, this is made by Southwest Disc. Uh, if you're interested in one of these, this is not a sponsor video. If you're interested in one of these, there will be a link in the description to Southwest Disc. You can get a 10% discount off of any of their sizes. Uh, I'll leave the code in there. I believe it's Jacks 10 But again, I'll double check that and I will leave the link in the description. I'll also leave the code in there. Go check out Southwest Disc. They make some awesome uh, plow disc. I mean, if you don't know what a disco is, it's just a plow disc that they've converted into a cooking vessel. All right, I think we're about done here on this side. Oh yeah, look at that. That's beautiful right there. All right, remember we already seasoned this side already. So now we're gonna do the same thing. And then I'll show you what we're gonna do next. About three or five minutes. All right, so it's been about two minutes and real quick here, I'm gonna add some of this pork pate on it. You can use chicken if you wanted to. But I'm adding a whole, this is uh, 3.2 ounces. Just some uh, pate, I got it at like World Market. And again, I'm just gonna add this on top here. Get off there, little joker. All right, so we got this liver going on. Now we're gonna start busting all this stuff up, including our liver pate. Now, Traditionally, in Cajun land, dirty rice is made with like pieces, parts, liver and gizzards. I don't, I don't know, you put all kind of stuff in there. But this is, we're just gonna be doing the liver today. Now again, if you're, if you're turned off by pieces, parts, or liver and whatnot, just leave it out. You can still call it dirty rice, and, it's, and it'll be delicious. I'm gonna deglaze a little bit with some uh, beer. All right, so while this is browning up the rest of the way, we're gonna go ahead and deglaze because we got some of this stickage down here at the bottom a little bit. So what I'm using today is, is some Abita Amber. Looks like that. This is a beer out of Louisiana. We're gonna add about a third cup of that. Just like so. Just give this a stir about. All right, we're de just finished deglazing that a little bit. So now we're gonna go in with some pepper. Now, uh, uh, guys, I'm gonna leave the ingredient list in the description of the exact amounts for you. Um, also, I'm thinking about doing a blog post on this as well, so you can go get a printable version of that recipe uh, at thebeardedhiker.com. Now, what I'm putting on now is some cayenne pepper. Now we're gonna go in with some cumin. And I, I like cumin, so I'm gonna go a little heavy on that. All right, we're just going set this off to the side here so we can move on to the next step. Shoot, this is good enough to eat right now, just like this. All right, we'll be back with you in a minute. All right, we're moving on to the next step after we've removed that. Now, we're gonna start out. Now, this is kind of pretty important, so get your measurements right. You're gonna need exactly one quarter cup of oil. I like using grapeseed oil because it's got a pretty high smoke content and we don't want to burn our roux. 
All right, so there goes our quarter cup of oil, and now I have my fire off, and I'm gonna put it back on in just a minute. All right, a quarter cup of just regular all-purpose flour. All right, we're just gonna mix this about here. Whoop, whoa. Get out of there, Leaf. All right, so we're just making a roux right now. So it's equal parts oil, equal parts flour, and we're going. You got to be careful if you're if you're doing uh, this on a on the disco here, like I am, or direct heat like this. You need to be very careful. Never stop stirring your roux, else you will burn your roux, and no one likes a burn roux. And this is going to take a while. Now, you could use roux that was already jarred uh, and you got people if I were to use a jar root net right now I'm telling you right now I would be crucified by tons of people out there so just doing it from scratch so I don't get all that crap although I'm probably still gonna get some crap for somebody anyway calling this dirty rice somebody won't be happy with it or they can probably do it better than I can and that's fine all right, so we're just going to make this roux here till we get to a uh, like a chocolate milk color. Still going, guys. It's been about 15 minutes, and you can see this color here. We like in the consistency. Notice how it's kind of loose. That's how I like doing this roux here. So again, we're still not there, but you can see we're changing colors. So keep going, but it's important for you just to take your time. Don't try to crank your uh, heat up. Keep stirring and just keep your fire real low. All right, as you guys can see here, we are so close to milk chocolate. At this point, you gotta be very careful because your roux will go to burn really quick. I mean, one minute you just look away and the next minute you know because it really moves fast at this point. All right, we're pretty close. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and add in what they call the trinity, which is basically bell pepper, onion, and celery. And you'll notice we'll lose a little bit of color of this roux, but the roux is going to continue to cook. I'm going to turn off my fire real quick. This roux is going to continue to cook. Um, if you guys could smell this. <laughs> Baby. It smells like a proper Cajun meal right here. Everything starts with a roux. All right, that was only about one minute, so we're gonna go in with our garlic. We're only gonna cook this for about one minute, and then we're gonna add some more beer to it. All right, in goes another third cup of a beet amber. So delicious. Look at that. Mm. Okay, we're going to start adding in about a total of one cup of chicken broth, but we're going to be doing it in third amount increments. So that was our first third. All right, what I want to say about the chicken broth is you can use regular chicken broth in a can if you want, or you can do homemade. Yesterday, I made my own homemade chicken broth. And basically what I did is I added some uh, mushroom, uh, what do you call it? Not the tops, but the bottoms of the mushroom. I added some carrots. I added a, I pulled it like a rotisserie chicken and I pulled it and I put the carcass in there. I added some carrots. I added some onions. All right, sorry. That's our second thing. So we're just gonna, Keep doing it but basically what we're looking for here is you can see how it's broke up we want to emulsify this together so that's why we're not putting it all in there at, at once but anyway back to the uh i use the instant pot in order to make my chicken broth i find that that's the best way to make chicken broth i put all that stuff in there i added a little bit of salt a little bit of pepper some other things and uh, i pressured it on high for two hours and then I just let it let the pressure come down naturally. Maybe I'll do a video on that one day, eh? 
All right, let's add in that other third cup of chicken broth. All right, so we may end up adding a little bit more chicken broth later on in this cook. But right now, we just want to get this nice and emulsified, and we want to thicken this up into like a gravy, and basically the consistency you want is for it to coat the back of a spoon. All right, so we're just gonna keep cooking this down and I'll be back with you when we thicken this gravy up. All right, so we brought this up to a simmer, but that's, if you can see right here, that is too much. So we're gonna turn down this heat some because we want this barely, barely simmering. And we're gonna put a cover on it and we're gonna simmer it. I don't know how long it's gonna take. It could take an hour, I don't know. We just want this really thick to a gravy again like it cuts uh, like it'll coat the back of a spoon so I'm gonna be back with you when we get to that point all right that has been exactly 20 minutes and you can see here it's coating the back of... that's about what you want you just where it coats the spoon right there all right now we're gonna add our ground beef our seasoned beef back to this party here. All right, and we're gonna give it just a little bit of a, a little bit more chicken stock there. Give this a stir in. Add a little bit more, a little bit more chicken stock. All right, that looks pretty good for now. We may add a little bit more chicken stock to the party in a little while. So now we're gonna bring it back up to barely a simmer again, and we're gonna cook it maybe about an hour or so, we'll see. Um, this is all by feel from here. All right, so we've been going about an hour now, and we're about ready to add this rice. So I'm going in with about two cups of already cooked white rice. I did it in my rice cooker. Now, this is all about how much rice you actually want, how meaty you want this stuff. So, what I like to do is do about two, start off with about two cups of rice. And this was roughly, well, it was a, just over a pound of ground beef. So, we may end up having to add a little bit of rice. We're just going to stir this in and kind of see what we got. But it's all about how meaty you want your rice. All right, so I'm going ahead and sticking with the two cups of rice. I'm liking that consistency there. <clears throat> so I've cut my heat off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take two tablespoons of butter. We're just going to put that on there. <clears throat> we're going to put the lid on it. We're going to let that butter melt just a minute. And then we're going to give it one more stir. And then I'm going to show you what we're going to do after that. All right, so we're about ready to wrap this up and give it a sample. So our butter's melted. We've stirred the butter in. Now we're gonna go over with some green onion tops, just as a little garnish, gonna really set everything off here. We're not gonna stir this green uh, onion in, just gonna put it over the top, all right? And I just so happen to have a spoon to give this stuff a sample. <clears throat> here we go, going in. Popeyes, you need to be calling me for some dirty rice recipe because this is what's going on. All right, one more bite. <clears throat> All right, guys, if you guys want some legit, authentic Cajun dirty rice, you need to do this right here. Isaac Toop style, not Isaac Toop's recipe. It's more of a spinoff of his original recipe. I don't think he has pate. But again, I've made this before without using the pate. Comes out delicious, but the pate just kind of gives it a little bit more depth. So if you're into the whole liver thing, you should definitely add the pate. All right, guys, authentic Cajun dirty rice. 